It's January, so that means a lot of beginners just got quads for Christmas. In this video, I'm going to be talking about LiPo batteries, more particularly LiPo battery safety. First, I'll go over the basics of LiPo batteries. If you know this, just skip to the next section. I'll put chapters in the descriptions below. When it comes to LiPo batteries, there are three main specifications. Number one, cell count or voltage measured in volts. Uh, capacity measured in milliamp hours and discharge rate measured in C. The cell count is the most important number. It dictates the voltage of the battery and essentially how fast your motors will spin. The KV rating in the motors means how many thousands of revolutions per minute of electricity. So the higher the voltage, the faster the motors will spin. A normal LiPo battery has a nominal voltage of 3.7 volts. This is the average or resting voltage per cell not fully charged or discharged. A 4S or 4 cell battery has a nominal voltage of 4.8 volts, 4 times the nominal voltage 3.7, 5S is 18.5 and 6S is 22.2 and so on. The capacity of the battery is measured in MAH or milliamp hours. This is how many milliamps the battery can output in an hour. The discharge or C rating means how fast the battery can discharge safely without puffing or catching on fire. To calculate the discharge current, take the C rating and multiply it by the capacity in amps. For example, this AC 6S 75C 1300 milliamp or 1.3 amp battery has a discharge current of 97.5 amps, which is 75C, the C rating, times 1.3 amps, meaning the four ESCs combined can discharge 97.5 amps continuously without hurting the battery. The C rating can be a useful tool in gauging the overall performance of a battery, but some manufacturers like to hype this number up. 100C. Compared to nickel metal hydride or nickel cadmium batteries, lithium polymer or LiPo batteries are lighter, have higher capacities, and have a much higher discharge rate, so they pack a bigger punch or power. That's why they're used in high output race quads, but this also makes them much more dangerous. A few years ago, I was in my office charging some batteries that had impact damage. They didn't look too bad, so I charged them. After a while, I started hearing some crackly sounds and found two of the batteries were puffing and expanding and getting really warm. I quickly unplugged them and put them outside and left them on the concrete porch. I came back in, kept working. A few minutes later, I hear this loud whoosh and my dog goes running out of the room. I look out the window and I saw two of my batteries had flames like shooting a foot out from each side of the battery. I stupidly got the ho garden hose and tried to put out the fire, but all it did was create a huge amount of smoke. That brings me to rule number one in LiPo battery safety. Never leave a battery charging unattended. If I weren't there to take that battery outside, I'm positive my house would have burned to the ground along with my dog. It's sad but true, a lot of people's homes have caught fire because of this. Charging battery fires happen very often. I've seen it happen at races many times. Rule number two, if a battery does catch on fire, the best thing to do is just try to contain the fire, meaning don't let the fire spread, but just let the battery burn itself out. LiPo battery fires are chemical, so it's really hard to put out even with fire extinguishers. I've tried. Doesn't work. Rule number three, carefully inspect all batteries after flights, before charging, and storing. Look for puffing cells, punctures, dents, or any other physical damage. When I was doing the Bangkok torture video, one of the crashes broke my balance lead, and, one, and the uh, positive and negative wire were just kind of dangling. So when I got home, I took the battery out of my bag, and I got this huge spark and smoke because the lead shorted while I was moving the battery. Things could have gotten really interesting if that had shorted while it was in my bag while I was driving. So just watch your batteries before you store them. Rule number four, use a LiPo battery bag or an ammo can like this to store your batteries when not in use. I carry my LiPos to and from the field in my normal flying bag, but when I get home, I take them out and put them in the ammo can. I've heard of a lot of people waking up in the middle of night to smoking batteries. Enough of the safety tips. Time to get unsafe. It's demo time.
Unless you really piss someone off, you're probably never going to get an arrow through your battery. But this is just to simulate what could happen to your battery if it gets punctured. I'm actually making this whole video just so I can shoot an arrow through a battery. 